Um, Go from there. Okay. Topic four. Topic four. Uh, so this is a listener submitted topic from a while ago when Jacob and I were doing our fireside chat, uh, and we asked for topics. Uh, Rob, who's a longtime listener, uh, and he hangs out in the Discord and on the Facebook tr- group. Uh, suggested a bunch of different topics, but the one we're going to do is how would you run your own entertainment company? Um, so let's say we each won the lottery tomorrow and decided we want to get in on this. What would we do? Oh yeah. The, start, the four, 491 room million. Remember? Yeah. For, yeah. Whatever. Exactly. <laughs> and so I'll start. We're timing or just in general, we're, we're timing this very conveniently considering like you were, I didn't get the chance to watch it. I'm playing the video right now, but uh, the JYP 2.0. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, thing. yeah. Okay. That's so, yeah, good, the, the, the timing, we, perfect timing for this. So, for me, uh, I'll start because it's, it's a joke, and I'm just going to go all in on the <laughs> joke because this is not really what I would do, but I'm going all in on the joke. I would make IY Entertainment. I would go to JYP Pledis. Um, Starship, uh, Fantagio, MBK. Who else am I forgetting? Uh, core contents me or no? That's MBK. Yeah. No, that's MBK. What's yeah. what's Sohei's? Uh, uh, Sohei is Sohei you know, solo <laughs> and company that I don't remember the name of anymore. I think her dad. Basically, I would just go buy all of IOI and IOI branches contracts out. And put them in under one under one roof. You gotta wait till Somi's good debuts, though. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> Cause, well, I mean, it's gonna take a little bit of time to get this lottery all stuff sorted <laughs> out, and, yeah, yeah. and then go over there and buy a building and do all the the law stuff to start a company. Um, <laughs> by that time, they'll be done. They'll it'll be out, and I can buy the whole groups. So yeah, and then it would be perfect because like. You could what you could do is you have the IOI come back once a year, and then staggered throughout the re- the year you have all the branch group releases. So you get IOI something, you get something <laughs> IOI related every month for forever. It's, there's always <laughs> someone promoting, and it'd be perfect. And then the building could be a giant ice cream cone. Uh, <laughs> exactly, and, like the, juniors. A giant, and, it's the giant ice cream bong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a it giant IOI light night. stick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's exactly. They synchronize the entire building with like their concert. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what I would do. That's that's not actually what I would do at all. But <laughs> if I wanted to be serious, but I felt like going all in on the joke because Jacob and I have talked about made this joke before. Hmm. Um, that I would just make IOI entertainment, hmm. and that's what I would do. So for me, I actually put some decent a decent amount of thought into this because I think that I don't know who knows if it I is ever, a good it is a really good idea like for prompt, a topic. Yeah. But I just felt like saying screw it and going in on all in yeah. on a meme. Yeah, I, I definitely like number one IOI fan self self proclaimed. Yeah, I mean, not. I'm probably I mean, if this were ever to happen, I'm probably the one with most music experience out of all of us. So it, mine would be probably be the most realistic like thing to happen. But like, I wrote down a list of sort of things I would do. Uh, the th- like, number one would be actually release music on like YG. <laughs> number two would be don't un- overwork them like JYP. Number three would be don't starve them slash restrict their freedom too much like SM. Uh, well, I mean that's just like the the general points. Uh, another like uh, the main idea I wanted to sort of take would be from having watched Pro- uh, Pro- Produce Forty Eight and doing my research on the AKB Forty Eight group. Uh, one thing I really like about them is. Uh, they have something called kenkyuse, which is like because you know in, in in Korea we have they have trainees, which is kind of a normal thing, but they don't really get much exposure until they make their debut. Whereas in the uh, forty eight group system, you have uh, the kenkyuse, and then they get they get drafted to like teams or whatever, and they they still get. Um, if you go to the AKB forty eight theater, uh, the 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 tickets that are discounted or there's there's cheaper tickets where if it's like can you say they're, they're training members so basically they still get to you could they still get to perform in front of like live crowds and they still get to do concerts and everything and that's part of their training so I feel like I feel like they should sort of bring that aspect into K-pop more because again like we're kind of seeing with uh I mean and to some degree they kind of do it where they have like label like. Um, label showcases or like entertainment company showcases, but they're kind of like small private events. I feel like well, it, it'd yeah. kind of be a it, it'd be a good idea for them to just sort of get more of that uh, 
like stage experience and live experience as early as they can so that they're just not like deer in the headlights when it comes to just like performing their debut and i feel like that that's again we've, we've talked on on length about like how we, maybe skill wise uh, the akb members aren't necessarily as better better than uh, the Korean trainees, but again, when it comes to like stage performance and like having charisma and having a personality, they've got that nailed down. And I feel like that's the music part is probably very easy because a lot of the trainees in Korea are very like musically talented. It's just again developing that that like artist personality or that stage personality. I think that's what a lot of people need to work on. So. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, I feel like that's sort of like the biggest thing I want out of if I were to ever make my own uh, company is like sort of have like a training team, like maybe have a training team that performs maybe like like live. I don't know if any like music show would ever actually let them perform live or whatever. But yeah, just try to get them as much experience as early as possible. Um, let's see. I'd open an office in the U.S. so that uh, basically they, they have a direct line to, I don't know, like, MTV or just any other major major music outlet in the U.S. to help get their name out there. SM used to have MTV. Totally huh? plays all the music nowadays. <laughs> hey, they, I mean TRL's back. I mean they have live performances. Yeah, yeah, on we TRL. figured that out. Um, so, like I, I was just watching. So uh, like they have, <laughs> like they had uh, Joji and dead joji on for um and because the 88 rising released their head in the clouds album so yeah like they had them perform live on trl um so yeah i mean there's still opportunities to perform music live and also with talk shows but uh another big thing would be promote festivals because i feel like festivals are kind of like a the sneaky way to sort of build a fan base because mm. south like, by southwest coachella that kind yeah, of crap south by southwest like, austin city you know, limits inviting. governor's ball i mean yeah, Coachella's too generic now, but I mean, yeah. people are too high at Coachella to understand the music, but maybe that'll help. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I feel like that's sort of a sneaky way to sort of build a fan base because like a lot of the time when you're at a festival, you're usually only there for groups that you like know, and you just so happen to see other artists like when yeah. you're waiting in line or just trying to save your spot. So that might be a good way to like put like exposure out for my theoretical uh uh, music talent groups. Um, I'd hire SoundCloud producers like Tack, who already works with um, like uh, Bada and Twice and like all the other uh, people. Right. Microdito has worked with Neon Bunny, but I, I, other than that, I don't think he has much uh, else than that. So I'd like to see him do more K-pop or get more work with more K-pop artists. Two Tone Disco, who are kind of sort of my maybe my friends on the internet, but uh, yeah, they, they did a J-pop song recently. So yeah, and uh, with a lot of the hyperkey stuff like we were talking about with like Girlfront and uh, with uh, Sweetie, like before with, uh, with G-Friend, uh, like that's kind of like their style of music. So I feel like they could do it well and um, neat another SoundCloud producer. I feel like just like the whole like undiscovered or like there's a lot of like SoundCloud, SoundCloud producers that are that they could tap into so get more of maybe a a youthful sound or mm. sort of like appeal to that that would help appeal outside of uh the normal k-pop sphere and obviously again with with genres just utilize way more future funk and future bass because i need more of basically i would make an entire like label that just do like every song sounds like lady but you <laughs> I mean, not really but i feel like that's just an underutilized genre so i just like i try to do that i figure out a way to make that a group just call or maybe it. i just yeah. buy i just buy clc from uh cube since they're not going to do anything with them anyway and i just be like hey this is just do everything just do where are you like songs like where are you for the rest of eternity call it I'll like, be happy. just call it like city entertainment or something <laughs> city entertainment yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it might be the, but the thing is though when they say it when they say it in Korean or Japanese, it'll sound like shitty, shitty entertainment. Yeah, <laughs> shitty entertainment. That's shitty perfect. Entertainment. I love it. I love it. Oh, that's amazing. All right. Um, all right. So uh, for me, uh, I thought about it a little bit. Um, I think what I would do is first start out kind of like Wulim or High Ground, where you take in like more like indie, like indie artists, yeah. like underground rappers, and uh, um, you know rock bands and indie. Uh, you know that kind of stuff like black skirts yucko um epic high like that that sort of like music style is probably what i'd focus on originally because mm-hmm. like epic high actually started out at a label like that because woolim was originally for yeah they started off with woolim right well because woolim originally before they had infinite and lovelies they were an indie hip-hop sort of uh <laughs> like label i'm <laughs> not kidding they're yeah. known for anything but that basically yeah, like when yeah. you think woolim you don't think like 
You don't think Epic High? Yeah, yeah. Because th- they had Epic High, they had Nell, and they had some other stuff, I think, oh, as well. Oh, wait. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. um, I think what I do is start out something like that and, uh, you know, sort of grow those artists a little bit and then and basically in the background start to uh, pick up like male and female trainees as well because what I would like to see is a like completely like self-composed girl group that does Mm -hmm. you know sort of like indie and hip-hop sort of like uh, style of music because I feel like that would be really successful in Korea at least and if they can Mm -hmm. you know get big that way I feel like they can also sort of pick up scene internationally internationally eventually as well Um, so you basically you can't you want like he wants you basically want Epic, Epic High, the girl. No, group. He, no, he he wants he basically wants a mix of female. He, he wants Epic High and Bobo Gunsa just mixed into one. Yes, exactly. Just self-produced exactly. sort of. <laughs> but with like choreography and like you know nice videos and everything like because I so it's basically Bobo Gun, Epic High, and Stray Kids. <laughs> uh, yeah, but they don't need to like rap really hard. That can be for the boy group. <laughs> 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 well, again, like the I I I would definitely want to. Um, you know, sort of teach them how to be more like artists and stuff through their training and stuff so they mm-hmm. can, you know, self-compose their own music and have sort of a sense for what they like and dislike. And I'd like to, like from day one, sort of let them have some input into the music so that it, it feels more personal. And I feel like fans connect to mm-hmm. it a lot better that way as well. Yeah, definitely. And I think BTS is definitely a really good example of this. So, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. I think that's generally what I would do. Uh, you know, I'd I'd start out with like the indie and indie rock and like you know hip hop sort of stuff, and then gradually like uh, you know build the trainee talent and use my artists probably to help train them and stuff like that and sort of mm-hmm. build it up from the bottom. So yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I want to I'll give a little bit more serious answer too. <laughs> um, so I think. Like, a strategy I would have, at least, like, I, I won't go super in-depth or anything, just because I know we want to cut this episode short anyway, because Andrew has to edit. edit it right after we're done recording. <laughs> um, but I think my idea would be to have two groups um, where one is, is focused on Korea and one is focused abroad, mm-hmm. and have them do regular collaborations so that they can regularly have fans cross over. So kind of um, like an EXO situation, except not directly on China, just or everywhere. Like, or, no, yeah, or yeah, like yeah. It would, be, it would be like, that's yeah, or yeah, we, we would have like a, a twice that's like, re, like very much focused on getting huge in Korea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then like... Yeah, like a card or someone that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, not necessarily has to be a co-ed group and a girl group or whatever, but, like, yeah, and then that would be... That, like, is definitely focused on getting big outside of Korea, like having a world tour and that type of stuff, and then the other group, like, regularly having lots of concerts in Korea, but, and but then have them do collabs a lot. So kind of like um, a middle-out version and a out-in yeah, exactly. kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, the uh, what is it? Uh, have you ever seen Silicon Valley? Yeah, yeah that's the name of the. Like, you have the algorithm. middle out like <laughs> algorithm or whatever. It's so dope. The other thing I know from Silicon Valley is this guy. Fox. I was like, no. It's so funny though. It's so funny. It's such well, a genius you, you guys idea actually for understand a joke. It because yeah, you, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not gonna understand that show as much, but it's, no. it definitely looks. Funny. It's still funny though, even if you don't. Um, but no, yeah, yeah. So yeah, basically, um, I think that would be my strategy if I was to run an actual company mm. that isn't based in a giant ice cream cone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's probably a good idea where you have a lot more collabs and crossovers because I think that's the hardest thing when it comes to K-pop, especially in Korea where your multi-fandom doesn't exist in Korea. You're dedic- you dedicate your life to just one group and then yeah. every other group yeah. is your enemy even within like the same company. But it's I feel like company, that, yeah. Yeah, that would definitely help pe- open people towards like other groups and other styles of music so yeah that, that, that'd be a really good thing to see definitely where basically just kind of do like maybe like sm station except on like a group scale more often yeah yeah exactly but yeah that's a great idea okay i think Any other, i think that's pretty much all i i i got everything out yeah so. yeah i i sort Thanks. of like uh you know just thought about it throughout the week kind of thing so i uh 
Yeah, because I, I feel like that kind of entertainment company that I was talking about would be kind of interesting to see in K-pop specifically mm-hmm. with the objective later down the road of having an idol group that sort of takes on that same mantra, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I feel like we definitely we don't have anything like that because like Bobagon kind of is, but they're not really idols. Uh-oh. Like they're more of a yeah. band. Well, they don't do choreography. I, I think Stray Kids is because they yeah, started yeah. out being a, a trio of self-produced underground yeah, hip hop. I, I think, and he built a group around it. Yeah, I, mm. I think I think your uh, sort of thing of like saying combining Bulfagan Sa, uh, Epic High, and Stray Kids is kind of like yeah. I think that's exactly what I'd like to do, but in a girl group. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that wraps it up. Think we're good. Yep, pretty much. Awkward, uh, awkward silence. Awkward, yeah. Awkward. Pregnant pause. Pregnant. Oh, what was it? Pregnant pause. Anyways, yeah. uh, thanks for listening this week. Um, hope you liked it. Uh, join on Discord if you want to uh, talk to us about anything we discuss in the show or anything otherwise. Uh, Facebook as well. And uh, yeah, please subscribe if you're new. We've got a lot of new people actually lately, so thanks for yeah, coming. Yeah, for free. Produce Cast is bringing in a lot of new faces, so we'll mm-hmm. we'll figure out when that's coming out soon. Um, yeah, we need episode yeah, that's seven. Probably the only thing we, yeah, that's probably the only thing we have on the horizon for now. Uh, yep. uh, unless Nate decides to do another unboxing, or I don't know. Uh, Chunga's coming in, so I'll probably oh, unbox that's that. True. That's true. Cool. Uh, like I said, I, I I'm cutting my unboxings down to just IOI branches. Mm. Before um, before the before Luna debuts, I'm definitely going to do the. Uh, the all 12 18, the unbox- 17, 17 single unboxing uh, yeah uh, uh it's gonna be fun i, I do dude, you have not, them all yet yeah no I, I need like six more albums but all of all okay. the ones i have right now are still in the shrink wrap so <laughs> oh really you haven't even opened yeah them? i haven't touched them at all so we'll, so we'll see i got that. my giant pile of 17 books over there <laughs> so that should be fun um Anything else on the... Her- oh, I have VAV on my birthday. I think I mentioned that prior. Um, after that would be Hyoko, which I believe, Jacob, you're coming down... Yeah, Jacob's coming down for... Yeah, in September. Uh, in September. Uh, yeah, that's... six that, is, like, November. Yeah, that's, well, that's, that's probably... Tickets the- aren't on sale yet, but I think they go on sale in, like, August. I'm yeah. S- so I'm still not sure whether I want to go to day six or not, just because funds-wise. Probably not, yeah, but... I'm saving... I'm probably I'll, I'll keep it I'm up in the air. You missed them the first time. I know. I want to see them really bad, but like, I really need to save money. We'll see. We'll see I how much they are. Yeah. It's good, but uh, we'll see how much they are. Yeah, maybe I'll forward you. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll get there. <laughs> Anyways, thank you and goodbye. Thanks for listening. Come back next week. Oh, no. We'll see you then. Stay hey, creamy. Windy. Stay creamy. Throbbingly no, windy. Windy. Throbbing, that- throbbingly windily creamy. Oh yeah, <laughs> Windily isn't a word. <laughs> it is now. I always thought it was hilarious that that's their excuse for what MFPTY is. Yeah, for. yeah, because MFPTY yeah. is two, two, two meanings. As my fans are well, better than yours, and motherfucking busy tiger, you busy right. tiger, me right? Yeah, like apparently, like they didn't really have a name for their group. Somebody asked them, and they were just like uh, MFPTY. <laughs>